Hello, my name is Kevin and this is the Love Decanters channel and today I'm going to talk about Stuart Crystal Woodchester pattern. So that's Woodchester. I can give you a quick look at the beginning to show you what it's like. It looks like this. Yeah. Let's see how close I can get. There you go. So yeah, it's got usually it's got five little you can't see from that angle. Yeah, five. So you've got five. And um so yeah, and there's also there's two there's a variation on this. So the original Woodchester had little matte dots up here between the upright ferns and um and then the post war ones don't have that. And um, so what I'm going to do, I have a lot of this. This is not going to be a short video, I don't think. Um, I'm going to show you a book reference. Then I'm going to show you what's in the catalogues. And then I'm going to get on and show you a lot of glass. So, yeah, I have a lot of the patterns. So a lot of the things that you're going to see in the catalogue, I've got the bulk of it. So let's get on and have a look at this. The book we're looking at here is Miller's 20th Century Glass by Andy McConnell. Um, so yeah, so this is one, you see these little discs between the matted discs that are between the, the ferns, and then these have got none, so this will be probably be post pre-war, and these will be post-war. On here it says mould blown. So when Stuart Crystal used to um, blow things into mould, you don't see a seam because the... Um, the blowers would would turn it within the mold and wipe out any seams, so it looks very clean looking. Um, Woodchester crew has it's got numbers on it and everything. It says there's over thirty shapes in the Woodchester pattern were illustrated. He says most featuring the matted discs. I've been through the catalogue, and yeah, everything's got the matted disc. Um, these prices. Are a bit high um, even 20 years later they're even higher so yeah that it's cheaper than that and and I can say it is easy to build a service because I have a huge service for this and it's the thing that we um, bring out for Christmas or whatever when we're having a meal in the house with guests and everything the, the tables laid out with all glasses and jugs and bowls and everything so yeah it looks really nice um, on mass so to speak so anyway I will get on and show you what's in the catalogues so here we are with the 1938-39 catalogue as he described it and you can see it's got different cruets bowls um, grape fruit bowl I think you've seen me mention it's got this little dish on the bottom to put the pips in and there's a sweet bowl for your puddings and things um, another sweet bowl, big bowls, bowls without foot, pickle jars, yeah, <laughs> beer, beer mugs, celeries, you know, cocktail shakers. I haven't seen the cocktail shake in solid glass because by the time it, in the book it says 1935, and by 1935 they were all with the metal tops. I don't have one. Um, Carafts with, with the glass on, um, jugs. I don't have this jug, but I do have a jug that's not here. Um, decanters. I don't have the shape of decanter either. I do have this one. Um, so let me um, flip over a couple of pages and I'll show you some more. So amongst the goblets, they've got one here, and you can see with the dots as well. And then if I think, if I start flicking through the pages, I will find more. Um, this is like Woodchester, but not. There's. This is um. A beer glass and jug. Any more on this page? On the next page? Yeah, it's kind of like oh. There's another glass. This glass looks to be um. Whoopsie. Tall hock, it's a tall hock, and I think the bottom half will be amber or will be coloured in for in gold or green. So I've never seen one of those. Um, but we'll go over, so they must be pretty rare. And um, there's a bowl, yeah. I think this bowl was on the first page that I showed you. There's this bowl, 
and then there's this bowl without a foot. And is there any more? Are we getting to the end? I'm sure there's. I'm looking, I'm looking. My eyes are not seeing. Anyway, you get the idea. There's, there's loads of it. Um, I think there's more. Yeah, there's another little jar here. And um, this cruet, I don't think this cruet was on the first page either, so that's different. Anything else? And I think you did see these already. So I think that's it now. I said that's it, but I lied because this is um, a post-war catalogue now. I think this is from the 1970s because the letters look like they're done in letter set. And uh, yeah, so as you can see, there's no dots between the ferns on these on this post-war one. Um, and yeah, the bowl here, and you'll see a few things, are in the Stratford pattern with these moulded rings as well. And um, let me skip on a few more pages because these are all spaced out on this this one here. Um, celery vase. Uh, you got a cream jug and oh, cream and sugar bowl and cream jug over the page. There's a beer mug. Yeah, so they're still doing the beer mug over the page again, and we've got a little jam pot or mustard pot. And on the other page, we've got another little jug there with a lid. I'm not sure what that one's for. Over the page, is there any more? Still doing the cruet set. I think, am I at the end now, or is there more? I think I'm at the end now. It's getting over to other things. So there we go for this one. You thought the pain was over, but it's not yet. Um, here's an... A bit more this is the wine services catalogue and i think this is also from the same period as the other one because it has similar letter set and um yeah so a bit more woodchester but also on the next page what it does is it lays out all the shapes and um yeah i think i've got all of these shapes and more yeah that's the kind of pain i'm about to inflict on you so um yep yeah, so here we go i'm gonna Go and dig out some glass now. So this is the first piece I'm going to show you. And I think it's the only piece I have which has the dots on it. Um, we did have more at one point, but we decided um, we'd offload them because the bulk of what we has doesn't have them. There's a little top like this. Usually the white fries tops, um, yeah, they've... Got a flat top, little the finial's got a little polished off end, and uh, where the cutout is, it's like that. There is no. Oh, there is. I didn't. Th I looked earlier, and I didn't think it had one. It does have a mark there. Can you see? Yeah. Yeah. And if you're wondering what happened to my thumb, I really bashed it the other day. So, yeah, it is what it is. Anyway. So that's the first bit I'm going to show you. So the first thing I'm going to show you here is the tumblers. And uh, yeah, as I said earlier. Oh, actually, I've just know What an idiot. Yeah, look at this. So inside the bigger ones, there's five ferns. When you look at it from the inside, there's five. I never realised that the small ones have four. Yay, what a revelation. Anyway, you can see it's marked. And um, yeah, so different sizes. And as I said, as, you, as you'll see, there's even more size variation. This as I work my way through the glasses. So here are the sort of like basic glasses. Um, in the catalogue, the glasses name that I think these relate to are Goblet, Claret, Sherry, Port, Liqueur. I've got six here. That's only five. One of them might, this one might be a tall champagne. I'm not certain. Um, but um, yeah, it's, you know, they, they were changing them over the year. So if, if you think these were probably made, if these are post-war, so these will be made from probably 1945 or 46 or something like that right through to 1980. 
um, and they would be introducing and, and taking out different shapes and sizes as they went along. So here I am back again with more glasses. Um, I realised I missed this one off. Um, this is, I think this is the sherry shape in the last one, but then the row would have been seven glasses, and I said I only had five. This is a champagne coupe. This is a tall beer. This is the um, hock glass. You can see all, I think all of these have got five. Oh no, the small one, again, has got four. Um, and yeah, the share, the champagne coupe has got something different. I brought this one specially because you can see it's the, it still has the label on it. Um, I know this is, I don't know exactly when this label's from. Later, um, Stuart Crystal, the, the labels were dark blue and hexagonal. Um, so, um, yeah, I don't know when this is from. It kind of feels a bit papery as well so I suspect it's probably at least 70s maybe maybe as early as the 50s I don't know um, but anyway and yeah I think they're all marked Stuart England quite often they're marked right in the middle let's see if the small one is I'm not check that yeah just here don't know if I'm going to be able to catch it on the film but yeah, and there's no pontal mark on any of these. Um, yeah, they're all pontal mark free. You can see that's got... Yeah, no pontal marks. And as I said, they're, they're all marked. So, yeah, we'll now move on to something different so yeah yeah I know these are a bit disparate but I don't want to be here all night showing you the same stuff so this is the beer mug um, it has a little wider base there a couple of lines and these little lines will appear on some of the jugs as well and then yeah it's got still got even though it's got a handle we've still managed to squeeze the five ferns on on, on this this is different. It does have a, a polished pontal. And then the um, celery vase doesn't have a polished pontal, but it does mark, it is marked. Um, there is some method in this madness in that I'm trying to... All of these, this range of stuff that I'm showing you here, basically they... Stuart Crystal used these for their other patterns. They just have the same shape, different pattern cut, and the same shape, different pattern, over and over. So, um, yeah, so although I'm showing you all of this, these shapes apply to other patterns. So, um, yeah, and the sort of like, it would have the same feature. So the mug would have this bevel, and, or this, this wider base, polished pontal, etc. Um, yeah. Celery vases would look like this. They'd use the same, they'd be blowing them all into the same mold. Um, there'd be no seams because they spin them, as I said. Um, but yeah, so this is this is how most of their service will look. Here we go. So this is the current service. You saw these in the pictures. Just interested to look. And um, yeah, so this has only got four ferns on it, the small things. Um, these only got four, yeah, these have only got four. The jam, the salt. Pepper. This is a little, I think this is supposed to be a cream jug. It does have a pontal mark, you can feel. So the whole base is a pontal, so it actually sits on this edge here. And then um, and then little conservatory conserve concert or preserves that's the word I'm looking for um, jar with the lid with a little hole in it for the spoon and um, yeah and again 
point this out because this seems to be a feature of Sir Crystal with the pop top of the little round ball, top polished off. So if you see one of these jars, basically it's like a tumbler, but it's got a thicker base. But where the lid has a, a ball with a polished off top, um, yeah, that's most likely to be Stuart Crystal, at least in the UK it is, anyway. So, yep, yeah, so that's a bit more. There is more to come. Sorry. So, I'm doing bowls now, yeah. So, um, I don't have the grapefruit bowl, which would be like this, but with a little dish shaped foot. We have this little fruit bowl here, like this, for your dessert bowl, I should say. And again, it has the polished pontal. And uh, yeah, so this is different in that it's got six ferns on it. Ooh. This one has six as well. Actually, I haven't counted this many. I know it's got a load. So, yeah. Uh, one, two, three, four. It's got nine. So, um, yeah, and these are based on the Stratford pattern. You see these molded rings? That's the Stratford pattern from 1921. And then they basically reused it in 1935 for... Uh, so they'd basically be reusing the same molds from 1921, 1935, by adding this cutting. Then they would carry on using it after the war, um, up until the 80s. So um, I don't know if they, how, how frequently they would need to remake those metal molds. But um, apparently they were quite expensive, so just reuse them and reuse them. Um, so yeah, I think this has got a pontal mark. Yes, it's got a pont nice, good pontal mark in the middle there. So, um, and they're all marked Stuart England. Put it down. There we go. Um, so yeah, there you go for, for bowls. And now we've got jugs, yeah. <clears throat> we've got this size jug. Um, and yeah, what I've, now that I've started looking, so this jug has got five ferns, but the big one, it's got six. In fact, actually, if you point it this way, you can tell how you can see, look. The fern here is right underneath the spout, the ones here on each side. So, um, <clears throat> this one has got five as well. Yeah. So um, they all have um, these lines just above, as you can see. Um, this one has lines below, but this ones don't. Um, but yeah, so this is the three sizes of jug that I have. There was another shape in the 38-39 catalogue. Um, but I've never seen one in real life, so I suspect they stopped making those. Um, and they didn't make them after the war, I suspect. So, um, so yeah, so these are the jugs, and I've got uh, one more thing to show you. So, yeah, this is the um, the best bit, because obviously it's the decanters. So, um, we've got a claret decanter, a normal sort of port type of decanter, and a whiskey decanter. And... Uh, yeah, so, yeah, what's different? You'd think these two are together because they have these faux rings, but in actual fact, um, yeah, look at the stoppers. They are actually different from each other. And, uh, yeah, so, I think, I think the, Claret one is pretty rare because that's the only one I've ever seen. Uh, I've seen a few of these. Um, these are more common. I've got three of these anyway. So, um, so yeah. So, uh, yeah. What you're not seeing is how many multiples. So, I could do full service for 12 or some cases 15 or 18. So, yeah, depending on what, what it is we're looking at. So, I do have a lot of glass for this stuff. And um, and it looks fantastic when it's out on the table. Anyway, <clears throat> so so these are my decanters. Also, these two have got star cut bases. This one has just a polished one. 
I think they're all marked. Yeah, they're all marked Stuart England. And um, yeah, and this stopper is this typical Ludwig Knei style with the leaves cut onto it. It's really cool, I think. Looks a bit like a spaceship. Like something from the original Lost in Space. So um, there you go.